Jackie, thank you so much for taking the time. I know for some reason our agendas got a little more, a little bit more flexible as of late. I don't know about yours. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, today is um, it's been a, it's an emotional day for me because uh, we just heard from our superintendent and they're closing our school for the rest of the school year, and oh so it's kind of like I know I. I'm in contact with my kids via the phone or Zoom meetings, but I didn't have closure with them. My eighth graders don't want, aren't going to get their eighth grade graduation ceremony where I could be a part of, you know, so, yeah. you know, when it, I knew this was coming, but once we had the uh, video conferencing with our superintendent, tears came to my eyes, the realization, I'm so attached to my kids. Absolutely. And, um, you so know, what do you so mean that is closing? Are, is there not going to be any more instruction at all? No, it's all um, distance learning. Oh but there's no God. more coming back into the classroom. So when you walk into my classroom, I still have the date on the wall, 3-11-20, um, on the board, I mean. And, you know, it's an empty classroom. It's, it's, it's kind of like... I don't feel ghost in there, but it's eerie because of the eeriness of what's happening in our society right now. How, how big um, is your school, Jackie? Well, our school has about 75 kids or less. I don't know the exact count. So it's, it's a small school? And then school? I have, yeah, it's a small school. And then I have, um, I have now I have 17 middle schoolers. And then, um, and that's for my middle school main class where I teach language, arts, history, and government. They have their own science teacher and their own math teacher, depending on where, where they placed. And then I teach art classes from second grade all the way through 12th grade. Wow, okay. So even that part I'm missing is that joy in them going through the creative process, not just the learning process, but even watching them grow with their art. So it's a lot of different ages I'm missing now. So it's a, it's a, major, it's a major challenge for you and for all the, uh, the teachers at your school. How do you go from teaching in the classroom one week, then next week you are, you're fully online? How do you do that? Well, our school, it was, our school's ahead of the game compared to the public schools. We are a public school, but we're a charter school. Our, May, our school is classified as a home school. Our main school is up in the Fresno area and they are 100% homeschooling with tutorial classes where they come in. Okay. Our school has been going on for um, maybe two decades and all as different schools, a different kind of charter schools. But then our the school we're at now, they, they funded us, or I'm not sure what the correct terminology is about 15, 16 years ago. So they allowed us to keep our classroom situation with homeschooling. So three days a week, I have my seventh, eighth graders. And then two days a week, they're at home doing homeschooling, or they come in on Friday for an all day study hall, for mm -hmm. in which we do tutoring. So we've already been given the pacing guides, the curriculum, it's all been given to them and we, we, we can play with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have that freedom, but we have already in place what a homeschooling or distant learning thing is. The only thing now is the types of tutorials or tutoring one-on-one -on -one yeah. is missing in person. Now we have Zoom, we're doing Zoom conferencing, Google Classrooms, uh, we call our students, um, once a week for sure, but I mean, I've had students call me up several days in a row to help with something. So yeah. there's still contact. So th there's, in a way, the, the culture of online business education, it's, it's part of the ethos of your system in, in a way that makes it easier. I guess that's one, one could think, right? That it might yes. be a easier, but... Yes. I but, think... Um, you know, the public schools weren't set up for that. And so uh, I have, 
I have a few students that I've talked to the parents where it's like one mother, her child is, he's in my class and her other child goes to another school and the, you know, her son, he came home with work. He knew what he had to do, what was due, what essays were due, what history project, where the school hadn't set up anything for the other son and he had no work. And so she was very oh. thrown like what to do. And this has been common with another family who has two, um, two sons that are older and then a kindergartner. And she said the kindergartner didn't come home with work. Yeah. But now as we're in the third week, they're starting to get work from the schools. I see. So that's, we're, that's what I mean by we were ahead of the game. Our kids already had their monthly homework assignments, yeah. knowing what's due. And then we supplement in the classroom. So how's how's that relationship with the parents? Do you do you find that it's becoming a little bit more difficult in that the parents may may be feeling a burden they didn't have before? And is that is that an issue that is coming up? Um, it's very interesting because it really depends <clears throat> on the parent. It's it's you know um, I have one parent who's got her two kids and then she's got her niece and nephew there. And she says, well, the dining room's set up. We've got chairs where there's a chair in between each kid so I can sit down and help. So there, she's, you know, so there's parents that are like, okay, they're taking it on, they can do it. Mm -hmm. There's parents who like one was very upset because she, you know, at the beginning, she's not now, but in the beginning was one son had no work where the other one had loads of work. And she just didn't feel, you know, why am I taking it all on? But now she's accepted that. And so I think it was, You've got different extremes, but I think parents, we're all accepting the situation. We, yeah. you know, we're, it's new for all of us. Absolutely. And it's got yes. to be cases that are dramatic uh, because it's impacting the abilities of the family to cope with the extra strain. And in other cases, it might be just a, a different scenario. And as you were saying, some families might, might be already well positioned to adapt, but not everybody, right? So it's, I can imagine yeah. how diverse that is. So let me ask you a question about your technologies. As, as a pedagogist, what are the things that are working for you in this new scenario? And what are the things that you're really sort of exploring and trying to scrap the <laughs> ideas to make it work? I'm exploring a lot. <laughs> um, well, let's see. I've done my tutorial on Zoom, <laughs> learning how to do that. Um, this uh, I, this program to project, uh, right? Uh, everybody yes, everybody uh, knows that by a, now. <laughs> yeah, a, a week or two ago, I didn't know how to do it. You know, I knew of it, but didn't know how to do it. So I, you know, been doing it. Um, so I have Google Classroom. Classroom's already set up, um, and then we have the Zoom. We have texting and phone calls happening. Let me um, backpedal a little bit. What is Google okay. Classroom, Jackie? Google Classroom is, um, would, I'm, would you call it a software, a program where you can set up an account with your, and set up your classes. So I have, a, I have several classes now, but I'm just gonna use my middle school for my seventh, eighth graders. There's a classroom, they get in, I set it up, they get invited with their um, school ID, because it's through our school account, okay. I guess. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. they have to do the school email address. And then that's where I post, um, besides them getting hard copies, I post their homework assignments, what, you know, so they know they can look at their math schedule, their science schedule, in case they don't have it on them or whatever. Um, now today with this past month, I had their homework, I had PowerPoints, I had worksheets, um, for them to access through that. Mm -hmm. So I have a seventh, we have a seventh, eighth grade class and the other teachers, the other grades have them too, but I have a seventh, eighth grade class. I set up a seventh, eighth grade chat room for the kids to be able mm -hmm. to communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. I now have a, um, all, we have an all school message board that they can access, videos can be posted, linked to. And then I have a um, art class where I'm just giving them activities or they can just post their own work, things like that, just keeping yeah. it open. So they can stay connected. Yeah. And now I'm just now um, sending out a, um, 
you know, had them take pictures of them homeschooling and I'm going to post that plus it'll go in our, um, our yearbook, but mm -hmm. so they can see because this is a major thing for kids, not just teachers and adults who are not in the teaching field, yeah. but you know, the kids, they're all social. <laughs> they, they are, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in terms of, of access to the internet, uh, have you or your kids have any issues uh, uh, moving um, home? And well, moving our, um, mm -hmm. it, yes, there is, there are some who, where, that live um, in areas where the internet is very spotty, mm -hmm. so they can't get on. I know that um, up in Fresno, there's a lot of people at our school who are in very rural areas. So yeah. they're having trouble with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's happening is like some families, some of our families have three kids at our school and one computer at home. So that's a challenge for the parents. You know, yeah. some of my kids, you know, access their work through I mean, that can their be so iPhone. Yeah. I imagine the flow to keep the flow of things moving, which is so critical to to maintain the standard. Uh, it's got to be so yeah. difficult. So it, uh, it's it's a transition because this is new for us. Yeah, absolutely. We're all it's we're all learning. What well, what is what is the background of most of your students? Are they from um, just uh, families that work off of agriculture in California, or ranchers, or uh, farm laborers, or, or are city dwellers? Uh, I'm not familiar. I I they're um, I'm going to say they're middle class more than. Um, no, I have some that are farm workers, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a mm -hmm. wide range. I have a lot of parents that own their businesses. I have, um, you know, some families who, yeah, at one time the parent was farm worker, but has worked their way to where they have their own, you know, construction business or whatever. And, and you know, so it's, um, the it's demographics so is probably, I'm going to say, middle more than anything else oh, nice. and it's and there is diversity in race in the school too yeah so if yeah. you have an economic uh, di diverse population too economically diverse uh, is is there a, um, a program uh, from the school or, or um, means uh, from the school to make sure to ensure that every single student has access to not just internet, but even a computer at home. Do you know if that's uh, of concern? Well, um, yeah, it's been a concern, which the school's in process of making sure people have um, some access to technology with computers. I know that, um, I think it's Comcast. I'm not sure if any others are now offering 60 day free internet for kids. Oh, how, how uh, nice. hmm. Yeah, so that's out there. I, you know, it's it's things. It's just amazing how people are just reaching out. I, you know, I, I have several Facebook groups I belong to, as an educator. And the very first week, I was amazed how many teachers were out there posting links and class plans and how to do Wonderful. distance learning. And and I discovered so many websites and. And now Zoom, as a teacher, you can have um, more than a 40, if you do the free account with Zoom, you only get 40 minutes. But yeah. as an educator, they're now waiving that if you sign up. And so everybody's really, it's bringing yeah. people together, even though we're <laughs> separated. <It's laughs> the social distance <laughs> becomes digital proximity. That's a good, that's a good yes. way. That's almost poetic <laughs> way of putting it. That's yeah. nice. So, um, you you've been using uh, it's, uh did i hear that you you're using facebook as part of your instructional toolkit or just to not, not other for, teachers? for me for myself oh okay okay i i just doing it i just find links and things like that that people talk i don't, don't i don't even um befriend um families that i teach presently i get a lot of friend requests from parents that i'm teaching a child and it's like no i've as all my years of like I don't do that. Oh, yeah. we lost you. Uh, Are you there now? Am okay. I back? Uh, 
All right. You're back now. Your okay. hand froze for a while, <laughs> but I don't know. What the, <laughs> I don't know if it recorded or not. But I, what I'm saying is, I do not befriend um, students' families or students yeah. in when I, you know, until they're yeah. out of the school. There's all these ramifications of things you have to be aware of when you're. you're you know, on the one hand, you need you're forced to explore these technologies. On the other hand, you need to make sure that you're compliant with procedures and and, and strategies and ways of doing things uh, at all different levels. So I can see the complication. So Jackie, here's here's a big question for you, and that I'm probably the core of what I'm interested in. As educators and as we're confronted with this moment, the main thing is how do we make sure that the students will end the, the, the term with a, an experience, an educational experience that is commensurable to what they were expecting at the beginning before the crisis um, began. So uh, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about your ability, given the circumstances, to ensure that the students will actually end up uh, having a, a positive and enriching experience? Well, I can only speak for our school and because our program is based for homeschooling and there is a lot of work and it's required and we call, you know, weekly and I've, I have certain kids I have to call like every two days and say, what yeah. have you done? Yeah. Um, so I'm confident our kids at our school won't digress because they're still required their monthly essays, their monthly history project, their tests and stuff like that so you know as long as I don't drop the ball and hopefully the parents keep up to it so um so for us I don't think there won't will be much digression unless it fails on the parent side of not mm -hmm. following through on the kid and I you know my words can go in one ear and out the other and yeah. still not get work so yeah. um you know and I have concerns like yeah. I you know like one Student. I haven't had work for two weeks, even though I've had three phone calls with them, and I and you're supposed still, to be dropped yeah. off today. But, yeah. but I think I think there's going to be in the fall when kids return. I think there's going to be a lot of catch up that in that teachers are going to have to check where the kids at and what they've done because a lot of parents are still working. There mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and I also noticed once it seems like now that I'm teaching middle school, there's a real change in parents' attitude where it's like, okay, you're middle school, you're responsible for your schoolwork, yeah. I trust you're doing it. Whereas elementary parents were right on top of it. So uh -huh. I had a phone call last week where I called the kid and I said, what work have you done? And this is one of my brightest students too, who <laughs> skates, you know, yeah. and, be, and gets good grade skating. And, um, and so I've got his parent on the phone and I made him say, okay, tell your dad, are you telling him the truth that, you know, when he asked you, are you doing your work? And he had to admit, no, I'm not. And now it's like a transition, the yeah. work's coming in. So, but if the parent's not doing their part, yeah, there's going to be, you know, problems. Plus, um, talking to one parent, they said that they normally don't do a lot of internet at home. But they're mm -hmm. a child who's at a public school. Everything's all online. 20 minutes of Lexia, 20 minutes of this program. And so I don't know, you know, what that will do. Yeah. It, it'll get a child away from paper, unfortunately, <laughs> reading. <Yeah. laughs> do you know what's going on with the kids with disabilities uh, at, your, uh, at your school? At my school? Yeah. yeah. Um, the RSP teachers already had a Zoom meeting with my student. Um, she had uh, going over reading the articles for his essay uh, that he has to use textual evidence from. Uh, so they're meeting their needs. We're all still working. Yeah. All right. So, that's that's know, quite a challenge. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I need but to be available. Like, you said a few moments ago, and, and uh, just, just, just I was just thinking that uh, I'm hoping this this is not wishful thinking that when the kids come back in the fall. <laughs> so what if, what if this was our, our new normal? What are the things that uh, that we can learn about the way the way we're doing things now that we can apply in the future? 
if if this was to become a a situation that that really transform uh, our scenario in such a dramatic way i'm i'm really uh, i don't want to be at all 1984 here <laughs> but but uh, on the other yeah, hand yeah. i think sometimes um we're, we're too um this is this is so dramatic that at moments I think, oh. well, maybe is there anything that I can learn from this? That, that I can, well, this is our... I think, um, I think one of, whoops, lost you again. There we go. You there? Okay. Yeah. I think to me, one of my greatest concerns is the um, student, the behavioral part in a child's life. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, children are very social. They learn from their peers. They experience problem solving through and conflicts, you know, through their peers. And, and right now, that has changed. And so I think that is going to be something that when students come back to school, that it's what, you know, like the power of play. They're missing out on the power of play with learning how, like the younger kids, power of play is so important to learn how to problem solve. So and so took a toy from you. How do you deal with it? You know, exactly. to to older kids who are very much, you know, there's the follower and the leader, and and I think that's going to be that to me is more the concern is the social relationship yeah. and what's missing you know it's very different with your peers than with your in your family situation being with siblings and dealing with those things yeah, so that's I where i think I have issues. that's that's a major challenge all right well i, yeah. I will remain the optimist that, that i am and i'm sure that we, we will we will uh, be out of this uh, hopefully sooner than later but we still have ways to go for what i'm reading in any event, Jackie, um, yeah. we're, we're, we're out of time with the time allotted for these short clips. Thank you okay. so much. This has been very, very illuminating. Well, thank you, thank you very much.